Well, hey, CrossCart fans. Uh, today is an exciting day. We are upgrading the KTM. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, man, you just finished it. How are you upgrading it already before you've even done a test drive with the full paint and bodywork? Well, here's how. I started this build almost a year ago, last November or December, and I had all the parts for it paid off around that same time. In fact, everything that I've been building has been paid off. All the parts have been paid off for six to eight months. So uh, my hobby kitty has grown enough to where I can, could purchase some aftermarket front A-arms. Now that's the beauty of using an ATV as a donor is that you have the full aftermarket support. So if you build one of these with a Honda front end or a Yamaha front end, or a Polaris front end, you still have that aftermarket support. So since there's companies that make aftermarket parts for outlaws, I'm gonna have adjustable camber, adjustable caster, adjustable overall track width on the front, and it's really gonna tune this thing in and make it handle like I want it to, which is kind of important because this one's squirrely because of all that power. So suspension tuning and geometry and that kind of adjustment is is really going to lock in how this thing handles so let's get started now what we have here upper a arm lower a arm and this is a company called full flight they're out of oklahoma now i've been following these guys for years and i actually buy uh, the replacement Heim joint upgrade kits from them to build my own uh, A-arms. These Heim joints are really nice. They come with awesome spacers already on them. And you can buy them as a rebuild kit, just the Heims without the tubing. And for a decent price for, for getting uh, 12 Heim joints. So I've been eyeballing these specific arms for a couple years now at least. But also what that means is that when you buy these, if they wear out, you're not out a whole bunch of money. You can just replace all the heim joints and have a fresh new front end. And obviously you also get the left side as well. Now, the arms I got are one inch extended arms. Um, they come in different extensions. So when you extend your track width, you have to extend your tie rods. So they include extended tie rods. These are one inch over, and the tie rods are exactly one inch over. Now, personally, I'm hoping that I can pull these in a little bit because my track widths are pretty set where they are. Like, I like them. I like the front track width. Now, what uh, put me over the edge to get this set um, was I was uh, changing the bearings on my hubs, and the front left had a bad stub axle and it was from when I bought it. So I went to crank, crank down this nut and it stripped. Uh, somebody had cut the end of the stub axle off. So I'm gonna repair it with a, a used hub and stub axle. I'm gonna reuse the brakes and everything, but again, that's the beauty. I had something damaged that I felt unsafe driving. So I hopped on eBay and got a new hub on the super cheap. Now, if you're using a Polaris Outlaw, uh, I believe the Predator front hub and stub axles will work as well. Not 100% sure, but I'm about 99% sure. Let's get all this put onto that buggy and then tune some suspension. Well, just a heads up to you, uh, the Polaris Outlaw 500s and the, the KTM 525s are not the same, um, which means the Predators probably aren't the same either. Look at this. These KTMs come with a two-pot front caliper. That's why the brakes are so amazing on this thing. I mean, the brakes are good on all of them, but <laughs> you're going to get a much better feel and uh, have all the brake that you want with a two-pot setup, which means that these are not interchangeable so yeah we'll just go with that i made it safe um i cotter pinned it cotter pin everything don't skip that
Now, before I hook up the shock, I'm going to show you this is another reason to get aftermarket front A arms. This has at least twice the travel of the stock arms. So if you want to do a long travel version, uh, this is the ticket. Now, I'm upgrading this, but if you're scratch building one of these and just collecting parts rather than getting a donor bike, this is an awesome option to just start with for your build. There you go, there's left versus right. Now, the right side looks like it's hanging lower, but it's not, I measured it. It must be an optical illusion where, because those arms are black or because they have a different angle on them. But yeah, these things are cool. Now I'm gonna show you something I really like about these. Now, it's just basic geometry. If you have a V shape and you make it longer, that back angle is gonna be wider. So here's something they do and I don't know if it's on purpose or not, but you see how there's like a 1 16th gap there? Maybe an eighth, 3 16th, something like that. So my guess is that's for if you extend this out, it won't bind up in there. So I'm gonna grab some washers and uh, just use them as spacers once I get the geometry aligned. So that's the beauty of these things too, especially if you're scratch building, um, you can really get everything just tuned in perfectly all right so next on the checklist is checking the caster angle there you go just slide this in six six point two degrees of caster which is right where i want i want about six degrees of caster and then finally we can take a look at our camber all right looks like camber is out almost seven degrees so let's get that adjusted All right, and there we have it, uh, one degree of camber. Woo, take a look at that. Nothing says race car like fully adjustable front ends. Now I have the stock front uh, tie rod because it's aluminum. That's less sprung weight, uh, it's lighter, and I'm hoping to get away with that. I hope I have enough adjustment to get away with using the stock ones. Uh, that's, I don't know, my opinion, and it's a small one uh, is the only downfall of this kit but this kit is 30 to 50 percent less than the nearest competitor there's a stock one for you look at the difference look at the adjustability look at the beefiness of the tubes that is a nice kit so i mean if i have to use their tie rods i'm not going to mind because it's just a tie rod it's not a significant amount of weight and another cool thing about custom front A-arms, you see my tie rod angle, how it's going backwards? Well, the angle coming off of here requires this to go forward. So at best, I run them level to each other. So what I can do is I can extend these two rear, which will take care of the stiction and fix that uh, tie rod angle so that we have good Ackerman. This is a good way to fine tune your Ackerman steering. How cool is that? There they are, installed. Camber is perfectly set to one degree in. I could not be happier with buying these. These were such a good investment. It's gonna make this thing handle exactly how I want it to. And if I wanna change some things, if I wanna change the camber in general or the track width, anything, I can totally do it with these. Fully adjustable A-arms are so awesome to tuning your ride to how you like to drive it. Now, as far as front track width, um, if the front track width is wider than the back, it's less likely to roll. Now, I like to run 
I don't know, maybe maybe a half an inch wider because I like it when the wheels line up. Um, I mean, half of this is looks, half of this is performance. I'm not like a serious racer. <laughs> so looks do play a factor in how I do things for sure. Just like all of you guys. All right, so for the KTM guys out there that are building this out of a KTM 525 Outlaw IRS, I found something. Now, building is, I don't know, 80% research and 20% execution. I researched this for 10 years, 10 years plus. Like, it's been in my head for well over 15. So, uh, I'm not sponsored by anybody, but I'd like to show you guys what I found. And... When I've been driving this, the chain has been touching my slave cylinder, and I'm not okay with that because replacement slave cylinders are well over 200 bucks. So I had to get a case saver. The stock one does not fit this, not only because I run a different chain angle, but because I run a 15 tooth front sprocket, and that's just no bueno for the stock case saver. So, DRW Performance, all right? It was just a quick Google search for Outlaw 525 case saver. And they have this, it looks 3D printed. It's very, very, very tough, very strong. It's not like your ornament 3D printed plastic. It's pretty heavy duty stuff. Now, same situation. It won't fit because of the different chain angle. So what I had to do was I cut this out and I basically just cut this chunk out for the new chain angle, and you can see it's gonna fit right on there perfectly, and we're gonna have a case saver slash slave cylinder saver for our cross cart. Look at that, can't wait to get that on. And there it is. What was it, a 45 second install just because I didn't have the five millimeter sitting right here next to me? Look at how nice that is. Now, since it's so tight around this and it covers both sides of the sprocket, 15 is the biggest you can get for this. And it, the clearances are really, really tight, which is really good news for us because we want as much protection around here as we can get. If this chain breaks, Man, it could fling all over here and, and take whatever it wants. So, but the biggest thing is this master cylinder. Now remember when you're screwing this in, you're screwing into aluminum, magnesium. It's not super hard iron steel. This engine's super lightweight and that's how they do it. So don't over crank these and strip your, uh, your left side case out. Dude, that's cool. <laughs> Ain't that just the luck? Get it done, spend all day working on it, and now it's raining. Well, we didn't get to ride today, so I decided to take a minute and finish up the cargo trailer to get us ready for some racing. This shows up better at night, so it kind of works out better that I'm showing you this now. Let's get this opened up. All right, you can see it's dark in there. So, let's flip this on and see what happens. Look at that. Now, that's just the center six lights. That's just the loading lights, as I call them. Um, you open up the back door, you have a light switch. Now, say you need a little bit more light. Let's head up front and look at that, another light switch. Now, that's the one we installed earlier on the last video. Let's see what that does. Look at that, even brighter. You could fix your stuff, you could maintain it, change the oil, whatever with all that light. Got the winch set up, the solar. I raised the battery from the original position because I wanted to make room down below and it just made sense. I'm gonna get my fuel can, spare parts, tons of room for anything I wanna put up there and tie down. Now I got the power panels installed. Here's the voltage checker, 12.6, because it's not on solar. Got uh, two USB ports, and here's the 12 volt outlet with the 150 watt plug-in inverter. I've been running my shop vac on it. I 
been using the Dremel to actually cut out this power panel. It was pretty nice. So you've got the ultimate setup here basically. And I put one on the other side. This has a 12 volt outlet and it's got two USB sockets for a total of four on that side. So that's six total and here's the most important the paper towel holder and it's the one hand tear off. That is the ultimate upgrade for the trailer. Now as you can see here I got my American flag, I got my Rogue Fab banner and here's here's the KTM. You guys really haven't seen it finished yet. I wish I could have drove it for you guys today but crappy rain. I, I don't mind getting it muddy but not on the first drive. So hopefully it'll clear up and I'll get you guys a test run. But man this thing came out looking good. I like it. It's my favorite one and it kind of shows because of you know how it came out. Oh yeah, I got my sweeper in here, keep the interior nice and clean, got my tie downs hanging up. This is ready to go racing. 